Uh, welcome back from that report. Now, presidential aide Zach Adedeji says the current administration is fully prepared to address in the country's revenue problem through fiscal discipline and harmonization of revenue channels. Adedeji revealed that the government would not collapse revenue generating bodies like the Nigerian National Petroleum Company Limited, the Federal Inland Revenue Service, FIRS, the Nigerian Maritime Administration and Safety Agency, NIMASA, and the Nigerian Customs Service in a bid to achieve achieve its objective. Now, international findings and economic analyst Mokhtar Mohammed joins me now on this discuss. Yeah, thanks for joining me, Mokhtar. Good morning to you. How are you doing? I'm doing okay. Well, I trust you're well too. Very well. About this conversation of harmonization of revenue generating agencies uh, has been on for a while now, even back when Kemi Ade Oshun was finance minister. First off, is it the best way to go, really? Well, I, I don't think so, because you are trying to look at the revenue generation, um, I mean, the revenue, gener revenue generation um, agency. You look at Custom, you look at Nemasa, you look at FIRS. All these agencies have different role constitutionally to play in the economy. And so uh, then there's probably been a revenue generation uh, uh, agency. And most of them, their constitutional role is different from the other in terms of remittance to the federation account. So we need to look at that. Remember that sometimes these agencies have the constitutional role to play and they have the administrative role again, which is different from the constitutional role. The administrative role is easy to be tempered with which may be that's what they're trying to do and um, trying to see how they all will we'll be able to monitor the revenue and then have it um, put in one account which is the federation account if from one source rather than custom remitting uh, 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 um the remitting firis remitting they are trying to see how they can get it into one one post remitting as they go into the federation account for easy accessibility that can work both to now unboggle those ministries and make them one i mean custom nice the revenue generation revenue uh, agency work the same with uh, uh, firs or the same with nemesa that will be an equilibrium tax that will have to go through the constitutional amendment you mustn't forget that custom is not just all about revenue you also have to defend the borders of nigeria also in terms of people that are even coming in. So there's a lot of, it's not just about the revenue also. There is the security side of it. Inclusive of Nemasa too. Nemasa is more or less like Nigerians, uh, if, even if you say they work in hand in hand with the Navy. Oh. So it's not easy for you to now say, okay, they will now become one with FIRS. FIRS is strictly a revenue generation agency. So they all have different functions, even if those two generate revenue. They have a, a, a larger function that have to do with the security mm. of Nigeria. So if I got you correctly now, looking at all of that, because uh, a school of thought would say that NIMASA is a, a regulatory agency in the maritime sector and not necessarily uh, uh, a revenue collection agent. Some people have said that in their argument. But uh, so wouldn't it be better off in my head, I'm thinking, uh, if the government were to separate uh, uh, these agencies per se as per having a... Uh, Nimasa, maybe just focus on uh, maybe uh, regulating the maritime issue. Why maybe uh, a particular ministry or maybe FIRS would focus on collecting all that they should collect uh, from the shipping uh, industry per se. I don't know if that works. Well, that work depends on what the government is trying to do, but that might work. But like I said, that will work administratively. It might not work constitutionally. Now, administratively, in the point that Namasa was not introduced on its own, and I'm sure part of the uh, uh, why it was established was also for to manage shipping lines and also to intrude there to generate revenue. Now, if you're going to take that off them, I mean, they may have to be going tap in hand to the federal government for budgetary allocation. Remember, some of these agencies don't go to the federal government for budgetary allocation. From what they end, they deduct from source, pay their salary, and send the revenue into the uh, revenue uh, federation account. So, if you want to do that, then you need to go. Like I said, constitutionally, you have to go in there and see how you can do that. 
But in terms of driving administrative uh, um, uh, prudency, like what the special advisor said, that could work because there's going to be an administrative framework on this is what we want. We want FIRS to be collecting revenue, but what is due you must be given to you. Remember that in this revenue generation, there's a percentage of revenue that goes directly to NEMASA. And if you are saying that you want to um, put all of them together, then that means you have to not forget that NMPC also generate revenue for Nigeria and also um, the, deep, the, 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 the former Department of Petroleum Resources also generate revenue for Nigeria by sale of oil block. So you, are, you will have to also bundle those ones as one also. So it's, it's not something I think is workable as it stands, but administratively they might come up with policy on how to manage the finances of those places. Verbally, I guess that the Ministry of Finance or the minister, whoever the person would be, has uh, his or her work cut out for him. But then again, uh, the presidential aide, Zaki Adedeji, says the government will double the country's total annual revenue, which is currently below 15 trillion naira, by deepening the nation's revenue collection system and not by adding extra taxes. How do you think they can probably achieve this? Well, I. Uh I, I, I don't know how he wants to deepen deep in. The only way you can deepen the revenue collection agency for me is by widening the tax bracket, not by taxing the already tax. Mm. And when I talk widening the tax bracket, is trying to get the informal sector to pay taxes. Mm. And then for you to do that, then you also look, you need to look at multi taxation that have been coming from the state government or from local government or from cooperative society within this informal sector. So for me, I think. If that happened, that works. Um, the, it's a good policy to say, oh, we are not going to tax the already tax. That means they are going to go after those that are not taxed. And if you look at it, 90%, of nine, about 95% to 99% of revenue that the government generates via taxes comes from the formal sector. Mm. The informal sector is one sector that have not been captured clearly. So then when they say they are dipping it and they are going to create a framework to attract the informal sector to begin to pay, pay taxes, then that would be a good one. I, I can assure you that they might even triple that number if they are able to do that because the informal sector is the largest employer of labor in Nigeria. Okay, so, but uh, the informal sector right now, if you look at it, uh, it is a bit uh, cumbersome to, to try to get them into the tax net. And uh, even those that uh, are being taxed uh, are complaining of a uh, multiplicity of um, taxes from different um, agencies of government. How do we get more people into the tax net and uh, still avoid the issue of um, taxing them um, more than just once? You see, when it comes to multiple taxing, we need to know uh, that some of these things we call multiple taxing are what um, illegality, whether perpetrated by the state government or by um, uh, um, their revenue generating agency of the local government or the state government, or some societies that have been created by the political class to be to stand as a, a means of reward system for them supporting them during the electoral campaign or before they get to office so when you look at that then i mean you 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 begin to remove those 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 um, obstacles then definitely you get um, more people paying taxes then again for you to attract people to pay taxes you need to come up with what is the benefit the one that you've collected from the former sector let's see the benefits is it the challenge with Nigeria? Nigeria doesn't even trust the government to manage their resources. Their resources, so that is the major challenge. So government need to 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 end the trust of Nigerians. And then if you do that, you have a lot of people on their own willingly paying taxes. And again, it's not in the place where you want to collect taxes from individuals or from companies. That you, then you 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 go with the with the military type of um, issue. You dictate to them, you say this is how much they must pay. You don't go into their books to look at whether was that was that what they generate or not. And then what are your impact in them generating? Have you provided security for them? Did you give them good road network? So those are part of the things that if government is able to do, Nigeria will naturally not stop on people who go and pay their taxes. So they need to come out with a framework. And when you're talking about capturing the informal sector, you must come up with a uniform scale. You need to develop it. Because if you say you want the market woman to pay the same thing like the one that is, I mean, to pay different from the barber 
or you want the market woman to pay different from the woman that is selling on the street, it will be difficult. So you need to come up with a uniform scale for all of them and make them see the benefit of what they want to do and also beginning to see the benefit on their business. That will be the game changer. All right, let's look at some um, other aspects uh, uh, the government can actually explore in uh, driving uh, revenue generation. Uh, when the Tinubu administration came on stream less than um, two months ago, it started with policies such as uh, the fuel subsidy removal, then, of course, uh, the uh, harmonization of the exchange rate and all of that. But uh, one would actually think that uh, if uh, there was a focus in the, redu uh, in the reduction of the cost of uh, governance with the uh, maybe reducing the paraphernalia of offices uh, at the civil service or the federal government level, uh, that the federal government can actually be saving some sort of cost and uh, can actually use such money to drive um, some other aspects. I can't but agree with you, but you need a political will to do that. I mean, we have a lot of political appointees that are unnecessary. That is one. Uh, we also have... Uh, uh, a lot of um, issues that have to do with the political class trying to satisfy their constituency and that also increase the overhead cost of governance. So what government need to need is to look at their overhead costs, look at the kind of uh, uh, constituency the government have. When I mean that is that you don't have a governor that is moving with up to 10 or 5 cars on its entourage and then it's taxpayers that money that is foreign those cars. So they need to do like, they need to look at it and begin to see how we can reduce the cost of governance. But it's always difficult for the political class to reduce the cost of governance because of the expensive nature of the election. election. And what I mean especially in election is that they have certain set of people that have supported them to become president or to become governor or to become chairman that they need to compensate. And so sometimes they make those appointments based on emotion, not because we need it. So they need to look at that. For the first subsidy, it has been able to bring government, have been able to save about 400 billion. But the Nigerian people are not happy, they are not convinced until they see what this 400 billion is going to add to the economy and how much job is going to create for the economy. Then we begin to see us appreciating what the administration is doing. All right. So. So the jumbo pay and the call for, uh, you know, or the clamor by, uh, you know, uh, those who were just recently elected uh, on their pay to be increased should not even be talked about right now as we speak. It should not be. We should, it's not even supposed to be heard. Mm. Just the Nigerians are, are, are crying. Where subsidy has been removed, cost of living has gone extremely high and it's still going high because exchange rate is very volatile in the import-export window. People are struggling to import goods into Nigeria. The challenge of FX is still there. The challenge of cost of business, doing business is still there. The earning capability of the ordinary Nigerian is dwindling. And yet you want to say you as a political appointee want to earn more. I don't think they are sensitive to apply it. And I don't know. If you are doing that in the National Revenue, Revenue Commission, we also have to look at it, how many percentage, how long does it take, when are you supposed to increase the salary? All these are stated in the, in the, in the National, uh, National Revenue Commission. So they need to look at that. And also they, they need to look at the ordinary Nigeria to what will they say, is their own salary being improved upon? Because you are talking about legislature that their increment will be up to in the millions, and you are getting other Nigerians that cannot even have increase in the thousands. So it doesn't make sense. So even to contemplate increase to whichever uh, channel you are using, whether a revenue, uh, mod, uh, revenue commission or you are trying to involve it yourself by one rule or the other, it is not right this moment. All right, so as we round off now, talking about all of this uh, revenue generation drive now, what would you really advise in just uh, one sentence as regards, uh, you, know, you know, ministries, uh, departments and agencies, even for ministries, you have uh, ministers, we have a uh, minister of, of state uh, for the same ministry, and of course, we now have even some uh, myriads of uh, agencies that ordinarily should not even be there in the first instance. Go back to the other reports. It has clearly addressed the issue. Mm. And go back there and see those issues. Up to this moment, President Buhari said we implemented the Nasser report. We did not see it. 
the Pope uh, President uh, Timbo will look at that report. It's a comprehensive report. It's a report that said which agency and which agency should be merged for efficiency and for the reduction in cost of governance. I think they should look into uh, that as soon as possible. All right, thank you so much. Uh, we have been speaking with Mokhtar, Mohammed, International Finance and Economic Analyst. We do appreciate your time on the show. Thank you, Justin. Do have a pleasant week. Uh, you too, my brother. So as we go on the show, the event experience Africa Texa has hosted major stakeholders, event professionals, creatives and business heads in the event industry since 2019 at the grand conference that sets the pace for an eclectic year as professionals in the industry. Now, since the global downturn, Texa resumed activities post-COVID in 2023 by hosting delegates from across Africa to an excellently planned and well-executed conference themed Reset. Now, this year's theme was geared at encouraging and guiding the various stakeholders on growth pathways, profitability, and accessing new markets in the industry during recession. I'll leave you with details of the report. I'll see you again next time. My name is Justin Akadone. Many thanks for watching. This one is nice. Okay, you look nice in this one. And so that was something that uh, event managers were having to do. The event planning business is highly profitable and can be started with no or relatively low capital. It is, however, pertinent to note that it is a networking-oriented activity. With the progressive comeback from the pandemic, stakeholders have converged on Event Experience Africa to share and connect with other professionals to better position themselves to hear the ground running in 2023. Led by Nigeria's foremost event planner, Funke Bokana Obrute, participants were intensively involved in an informative and unusual experience. They were engaged on drivers for sustainable business growth, curated sessions, emerging innovations and trends in the industry. They need a change of mindset. And for me, reset is either moving backwards, turning around, moving forward, pausing and rethinking. You know, you can either do a hard reset where everything changes or you just do, you reset your mind, you reset your business, reset your life. Um, I would say melting pot, a melting point where everybody can come together to learn, to relearn and then to just get education, to network. And I saw that there was really nothing for Africa. You know, I go for conferences internationally um, all over the world. I've spoken, I've attended um, over the years. And I know that we can be very expensive. First of all, getting on the plane, um, buying your tickets, um, getting on the plane, getting the hotel, paying for the conference. And they're very, very expensive. But I just thought, how can we make it nearer for people? People who curate experiences across Africa are the event organizers, event planners, the vendors, and people in the value chain see how powerful it is to actually put all of these people in one room it's such an amazing thing so uh, if i'm to describe it sexa is unifying africa and figuring out great ways to make this industry in africa globally competitive right now the world is actually you know the entire touchlight is on africa right now like i said a lot of times people don't see the they feel oh, it's just it's just a big actually okay, it's just a big color, it's just a big style. But truth be told, it's not true. What we do is basically curating a moment, a fashion moment for you. That's what your stylist does. So as much as it's pretty difficult to convince, sometimes your resume and what you've done and what and how you've been able to um, Put your previous, your previous brides or your previous groups together just sort of makes it easier. But a lot of times, it's convincing them. Texa 2023 was also targeted at corporate stakeholders such as brand and corporate communication activation managers, including experiential marketing companies. Nice from your clients, right?